Previously on Camp Bennett. Go get it, Zach. You gotta get through it. Yeah! Close, close, close. Good night. Close. Good night. See you night, you. want to get it just like you're going to do it on Saturday. You can't say, hey, I'm going to rise to the occasion on game day. Every day is game day. So you understand? We're at halftime, then we're going to go out there and compete. Other than hitting our quarterback, we're going to get flat after it. You understand? We're going to get after it. We're going to have the big eye in the sky, and it don't lie. We're going to have you on film. After eight-plus days of workouts, the Coastal Carolina football team set foot on Benton Field at Brooks Stadium for the first time in camp. The half scrimmage gave the Chanticleers a chance to make an impression in game time conditions. Way to kick the ball, JD. Nice height. Man, that's good height. Nice job. This was more than just an ordinary scrimmage. Attention to detail has been a recurring theme in camp, and a new wrinkle was added to the mix. We might as run a play. When I hit the whistle, number one O, number one D, you'll sprint to the ball, line up. And then the next whistle, you sprint off. And then the twos come, and then the threes come. We gonna learn how to run on and off the field. You understand? How fast can you get off? Last man, last man to get still, hurry! Hurry, get him. 7.9, 7.9, atta baby. We're gonna get that thing down to five seconds. We're gonna get it to five seconds. Not today though, but we're gonna get it there. Way to be the leaders. 6.9 to get off, 6.9 is leading getting off. Hurry, Marcus. G Wood, G Wood, bam, 6.19. Got a new leader in the clubhouse. Following practice, everyone came off the field under their own power. But in the cold tub area after practice, freshman defensive end Moon Edwards began to suffer the effects of heat exhaustion. Head trainer Jeff Pounds and his staff were on top of the situation. Finished practice all right, came off afterward, you know, just had problems with some dizziness, nausea, just felt sick and felt like a headache, so we got him in the cold tub immediately. And um, he started to deteriorate a little bit, but then by cooling him down, he got he came back. But because he wasn't able to ingest any fluids, we were able we had to call EMS and go over and get an IV in him. And so he should be fine and should recover fully in him within a few days. Coach Bennett checked in on Edwards before the final meeting of the evening. Edwards was not drinking any electrolytes, just water, which played a role in a two-day stay at Conway Medical Center, receiving fluids through IV. Yeah, I haven't been drinking the Gatorade and probably like I should, but I will whenever I, um, when I come back and just, you know, keep eating right and keep, you know, staying hydrated for the sun and for practices and running and stuff like that and getting better. It's a different game from high school, as I said before earlier in the show, but I'm going to get better and I'm going to come back strong and just keep working hard at what I'm doing. Playing college football is much more than knowing the playbook and having natural athletic ability. Taking care of the body is another critical aspect to success on the gridiron. With a 5.30 a.m. practice, the training room has got a line at 4.40 a.m. Every time he got his sunglasses on, ready to go out. Mm -hmm. Problem is the sun's not going to be around for a while. <laughs> not at all. Yeah, I think it might have just at 4.30. 
So another three, four hours or something. Yeah. We're here two and a half hours before and an hour and a half after. What time did you get here this morning? Uh, four o'clock. Uh, you know, I bummed my little knee. Not really that major. I just fell on it a little bit. So I'm just making sure everything's okay with it. You know, this right here gonna loosen me up for practice so I won't be as stiff, you know, getting up at four o'clock for treatment. That's five o'clock, Coastal Carolina time, five oh one, something like that. But uh this is definitely a grind part of camp, you know, getting up early, having to be here, get treatment, uh I'm just getting ready for practice, so gotta get mentally ready, gotta get physically ready. It's part of camp. Eric O'Neill knows all too well about injuries. It seems the word injury has been attached to the senior running back for the last three years. I'm doing everything I can, man. Doing everything. Working hard, man. Coach the pounds and the training staff have been getting me right all summer. I'm just trying to stay healthy this year. We're gonna have we're gonna have great uh, energy all year. We gotta bring Coastal back to where it was, man. We gotta be even better. We just on a mission right now, man. We're working hard to get there. What time does your alarm go off? Four fifteen. So if you had set your yeah, alarm at four, you'd be a little more awake. Over here with the big boys, we're trying to get their uh, body comp down a little bit. Get them all below thirty. We got about five of them still above thirty. I ain't calling no names. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, I thought curfew was eleven thirty. Coach Maurice Drayton has something with a little more pick-me-up than that morning cup of coffee for the wide receivers. <laughs> Me and Keem always give you ah! This year ain't no different. At this stage of camp, players have more than their fair share of nicks and bruises, some more serious than others. Coach Bennett calls it camp fever. There's a difference between injury and pain, and that's exactly what camp fever is, baby. You understand? Camp toughness. we got to keep getting that camp toughness. We want to be champions. But that doesn't give a player a free pass to just stand around. I mean, basically, I got an uh, ankle sprain and a little mid-foot sprain. And they had me in the boot for a couple of days. I've been trying to get out here since, like, early yesterday, but they wouldn't let me. So, uh, and the doctor came and checked me out yesterday during the scrimmage and told me that if I'm comfortable playing on I can come out. And this came out. It was another marathon day at Camp Bennett. Well, I woke up 4 o'clock in the morning, had practice 5.30, so I went in the training room. Got my back with look dad, got a, got a heat pad and everything. And went to practice, ate breakfast, went to meetings, so met with uh, Brian Kane for the last time, went to lunch, went to meetings again, picked up my books, ate dinner, and now I'm out here. Now we're about to run. So I got to go. On day 11, there was a new addition to the practice field. Till line. That till line there is for a reason. You understand? When you cross that thing, it's all buckled. It's all business. <laughs> Cell phone starts there. Till line, it goes to another level. Hey, right before you come across that till line, four in, six out. Six out. <laughs> In between practices and meetings, the players are also on a regular weightlifting schedule. The offensive and defensive units take turns in 30-minute sessions. They keep your body loose, keep your body fluid, keep everything tight, and everything. It's just, it's, it's, it, I mean, it makes you feel better. When you sore, it, it definitely gets the soreness out. Every night of training camp concludes with a team meeting and a different senior speaking to the team. And that kind of hurt me, you know what I'm saying, when I lost my brother. And sometimes... I think about should I give up, you know what I'm saying, because I was so used to my brother always being with me all the time. We used to do everything, together. everything we did was together. <clears throat> but when I lost him, I was ready to give up football. I was wanting to stay at home. But then I got a card in the mail from y'all, so that really meant a lot to me. So I just want us to stay tight all the time, no matter what, it don't matter what the situation is. If you don't hear anything I say, listen to this. I took things for granted. It took my appendix rupture in December for me to not take this for granted, for me to give my all. Y'all don't wait four years to do that. Y'all don't. Got something special in here, something different this year that I ain't never been involved in before, okay? We got a great group of seniors, man. We've been in y'all's shoes, so if we, we got something to say to y'all, y'all just listen. Y'all open your ears. We'll, we got our ears open to hear from y'all too, okay? It's still 22 days from opening kickoff in Morgantown, but it's going to feel like game day when Coastal Carolina goes into full dress rehearsal mode for its first full scrimmage.
We're blessed to be a part of this great game. Don't take one single play for granted. You understand? You go hard as you can. We got depth behind you. We can bring somebody else in. You live in the moment. Live in the moment. Every play. Set the tone on three. Set the tone on three. One, two, three. Set the tone. For its first full scrimmage or training camp, David Bennett wanted his players to feel like it was game day. So I left White Slide Black 24 and go Liz. Hey, let's get after him. Get on the field on one-on-one. -on -one. Ready? Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dressed in full uniforms, the Chanticleers would battle each other in a scoring system that rewarded both the offense and the defense with points. In football, an injury can happen at any time and anywhere. Coastal was reminded of this on the third play of the scrimmage. Josh, Josh, you got to talk. Go, Josh. Okay. Where at? Okay. Real bruise. Right here. This time, it was a scare. All-American Josh Norman returned to the scrimmage at full strength. Upstairs in the press box, offensive coordinator Kevin Brown sits up top and calls the offensive plays. With the headphones on, the stress level gets high. The Rio Gun, Z Jeep, 72 bars. Rio Gun, Z Jeep, 72 bars. Rio Gun, Z Jeep, 72 bars, NASCAR, ready? He won! I've got to do a better job of uh, controlling my emotions because like that's going on on that field, I have no control over it at that moment. So um, i got to take, take what I'm preaching to these kids and uh, apply it to my life too up in that little box, as you say. <laughs> Even in the midst of chaos, things can come together. Yeah, Is that a little preview Ball, for Coastal man. fans Ball, things to come? It's a little preview for, well, seven, not six. It's coming. Jamie Childers has made the move from quarterback to tight end and has shown throughout camp that he's more than comfortable making the transition. Childers is still getting snaps at quarterback throughout camp, but it's obvious that number seven, teaming with all-conference tight end David Duran, gives the Coastal offense a whole different dimension. In the past, when I've been throwing my, with my receivers, when they get tired, I'll just run routes. So I kind of developed that way, catching the ball. And then when the coaches came to me and said to be ready to, to make a switch, um, I was happy to do anything they wanted me to do. And it helps our whole position because he, as we watch film in that, um, I lean on him a little bit to lend a little um, um, quarterback perspective to the plays when we're watching film. So but he's very unselfish. He's willing to do whatever he can to help the team. So. We got to score touchdowns. Field goals will get our butts beat. Field goals will get our butts beat on Saturday. But it felt pretty good, you know, to get the game experience. Been out for a while, you know, so it feel pretty good. Have our jerseys on, and it be a little real game time experience. Carlton Mitchell is one of the ringleaders of the Shawna Clears defense. The man they call CeeLo gets on the field any way he can. Oh, my bad, my bad, bro. Oh, yeah. The offense won the scrimmage with a 53-48 edge, but the simulation wasn't over. Celebrate and sing a prayer. Coastal needs a lot more practice in singing the alma mater. From there, the entire team went to a simulated post-game press conference to get on-the-spot media training. You only have three weeks to get into game shape. Can you do it in three weeks? Yeah, we can't. Uh, we just got to go out there and practice. We got to run on and off the field. We got to run up to the line. We got to, uh, uh, while we're running the play, we got to work hard. As the play is over, we got to sprint back to the line. Following the scrimmage, Coach Bennett met with the leadership group. Each position selected one player to help develop a core covenant. Let me tell you something. You see a guy that plays your position with his lip run out. Before a coach even goes to him, who should go to him and say, hey, Bo, you're being very selfish. And we are, we come, me and Miles, CeeLo, you're correct. And I'm saying we got to keep watching for him. In a survey, players were asked to list the most selfless players on the team. Defensive end Kent Harper's name was on a lot of players' question sheets. Uh, me personally, I mean, I'm just another guy on the team. I mean, <laughs> did what I was taught. I mean, taught to go hard every play and do everything you can for your friends. And 
my friends are all the football players, so that's why maybe my name got on there, maybe. With the scrimmage three hours in the books, Coach Bennett met with both the offensive and defensive coaching staffs to look at the depth chart. Page and Franklin need to work some tackle. Because that's number one. There's the two ones, two backup tackles. We gotta meet them two. Have they working it? These two right here could be two of our best. Yeah, because Deshaun works his butt off. Deshaun out of Mullins. And this one, and Kenny, somebody said, did Kenny miss a meeting? You gotta have a fifth guy, because here's what happens. All of a sudden, bam, you get a quad bruise. Who's the next guy? So if that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's three of them going Devo. And that's life. I mean, them three guys right now, we can win a championship with him. We can win it 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 with him. We're looking for some others. With 21 days to go before the opener, some names may move some more, but some are already locked in. The football championship series is formerly known as Division I AA. The athletes are supposed to be just a step too slow or just an inch too short to play in the power conferences of major college football. But sometimes the big schools miss out on a prospect who slips down to an FCS school. Over the past eight years, Coastal has had the fortune of finding players who are not only good enough to play in the ACC or SEC, but good enough to play in the National Football League. Wide receivers Jerome Simpson, Coastal Carolina, 6-2, uh, goes to the Cincinnati Bengals because Chris Henry gone. You know who knows, Chad, Chad, whatever. They need a third receiver at least. It's opportunity. Look at the athleticism here, Key. He's wearing the right number too, by the way, right? Yep. I mean that is an athlete. This kid dominated a lower level competition, which you have to do. If you're going to play at Coastal Carolina, you better stick out. You better not be just decent to good or very good. You better be excellent. He was as a freshman all the way through his senior year, put up huge numbers, ran a 4-4-2 at the combine, great leaping ability, tremendously athletic. Keep in mind, Co Coastal Carolina produces Jerome Simpson. Receivers from Oklahoma, two from Cal, Texas, LSU, Michigan still on the board, and a kid from Coastal Carolina goes out of all those receivers like Malcolm Kelly, Deshaun Jackson, Lyman Sweet, Early Doucette, Lavelle Hawkins, Mario Manningham, the list goes on and on. This kid ought to be proud to be a second round pick ahead of all those receivers and have a chance to play right away with the Bengals. But it is interesting that Jerome Simpson of Coastal Carolina is a pick because their coach, David Bennett, Coastal Carolina, really good coach, left me a voicemail about this kid. And one of the things he said about him is, has great character. Four CCU players have played in an NFL game. The next shot of clear to make it to the ultimate level of football could be defensive back Josh Norman. He's long, he's tall, he's physical, and you know, he's just a, a physical corner that can get in, get in your face and he can also just read routes and read, you know, read protection schemes and he's good at that. With the players on their own for dinner, just one player was in the Atkins Fieldhouse on early Saturday night. It's a big help. I've been doing this ever since I was in high school, so it's just one of those things that, you know, it comes with, it comes with, you know, experience, you, there, you would say. <laughs> All right, man. Checking out a little bit of. Better get you some supper before we meet special team 730. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to get something a little bit, boss. Coach, what does it say for, a, I mean, just set the scene here. This is uh, this is downtime for the players. Well, it's uh, close to football time, 10 till 7, but uh, quarter 7 real time. We got special team 730. Josh, you got to go get you something to eat before we meet. He's just, that's why he's a pretty good player. He puts a little more time in. God's blessed him with some talent. He's got height. He's got speed, he's got quickness, he's got strength, he's got reaction, he's got flexibility. But if you don't have the knowledge, we were talking about this just in there a while ago with the defense. 
if you don't have the knowledge of what to do and it's a natural reaction and you sit out there and think, you're not going to be great. You can still be a pretty good player. Josh is, uh, he's got the talent and he is a very good football player again because he knows what to do. Right here on this play right here, play I, I didn't know what happened to him, but he uh, ended up uh, probably bruised his ribs just a little bit. Got a little scared, Coach? Yeah, run it back one more time. I know I just said a prayer. I knew he'd be all right, you know, whatever. Right there, they just had a collision with uh, – that's one of the uh, Dre, Dre, that's Dre, the linebacker. linebacker. Inside linebacker coming, right here. You know, wow. Coming in there trying. He's coming in there. <laughs> what he's doing is trying to hit the wide out, knock the ball out, and he hits Josh instead. So I guess Andre can hit pretty hard, can he? Can he? Huh? <laughs> Andre crazy. Can't even. But we got to work on him quit jumping, leaping on X point field goal. He's, again, he wants to come Wait in and get it, but the rule is you can't do it for more than a yard. So oh we don't need God. a 15-yard penalty with the other team. Kicking off from the 45. Yeah, nigga, they play right there, too. Yeah, they got to get us. <laughs> <laughs> they always find some way to get us. For the second off day of camp, Salem Baptist Church hosted the Chanticleers, and it was the players who performed the majority of the service. Victory today is And how does God speak to us? God speaks to us through the Bible. So, when the Bible says something, God commands us to do it. We're to live according to the Word. And one thing's for sure, Salem Baptist Church knows how to feed a football team. Wait a minute, you're not running sprints today with that kind of plate, right? <laughs> not today, boss. They know how to you throw it down, though. Even though it is an off day, Coastal Carolina does everything as a team. All right, Big Daddy, right. make it happen, dude. Right. Pull it for you. I appreciate yes, you. Yes, sir, Coastal Carolina. Let's do it, man. Whether it's a boat ride across the intercoastal waterway in Little River, or a late night snack, Coastal Carolina is always staying together. The final two a day of training camp was an anxious one for Rashid Goss. After missing the entire 2009 season due to academic woes, Goss was waiting on his summer school grades. The running back needs two C's to be able to play in his senior season. Tell me how you're feeling right now. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm always nervous to check my grades, but I got a pretty good, pretty good feeling that I did pretty good. You know, it's just, I always been like that. I was always nervous to check grades and stuff, so, but I'm gonna do it here. But the reality is that when you were in that practice there, was there anything going through your head that, hey, this might be the last time I've got this helmet on? Yeah, I thought about that, but like, you have to imagine yourself always doing positive things, you know? <clears throat> well, it crossed my mind, but Inside, I know I did pretty good, and I just went out there and just focused on practice, you know, but it's always that little thought there, but that's just human nature to have that little thought of negativity all the time, but, I mean, you got to hope for the best. They're not up yet. Keep surprised, wait. <laughs> zero, 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 they're not up yet. You guys got to keep you waiting. <laughs> It's be a long day. A long day. Success on the gridiron is fragile. One assignment can be the difference between success and failure. One mistake can lead to harsh consequences. One play could be a player's last. One decision could be the beginning or the end. Go listen up, listen up. Here's what's coming up on the season finale of Camp Bennett. Let's go. Yo, yo, right behind five Bosworth NASCAR. Ready? Right! The elevator boys, stay with me. <coughs> that elevator's on game day, on Friday before the game. You think you're going to be slick? I can be slick. I don't think I'll ever ride the elevator again. Overall, we grew together very well. Um, I think I'm looking forward to a good season this year. We're through, through 
through camp, um, it's season time now, it's grind time. I just know for a, a fact that these guys are truly something special. It's getting closer and closer to West Virginia, and, you know, my energy is just going up because I just can't wait to go out there and stop playing my senior season. Lamoli, why you wear that jacket out here every day? You're trying to get your gut down, your stomach does look about like mine, son. But you're supposed to be an ultimate fighter, I don't get it. Your stomach looks just like mine. Raise your shirt up. Don't be embarrassed, raise it up. Raise it up. Oh, and you even shaved it. Look, he does look, shave it. Why are you jiggly <laughs> like that? I didn't know Ultimate Fighter was jiggly. Bit I got to be a little bit heavier. Why? Because you're in a heavy block. weight? No. You got a block? Yeah. You get heavier up here. I am heavier up Tighten there. Tighten that up. Why you shave your stomach? Because I'm hairier you than you, you are. You think you're a bodybuilder? <laughs> I'm hairier than you are, coach. That's what the ladies like. This has been a presentation of WPDE Sports. For more local sports, log on to carolinalive.com.